We're here today at More Speed, and if you need work done to your Porsche, Ferrari, McLaren, Lamborghini, really anything, bring it here. This place is like a mecca for cars. I've got a special guest today. He's gonna show us around. So come on, let's check it out. More Speed was created years ago from racing. We've got a lot of miles behind us. We've been victorious in every form that we've participated in. Today we race the Porsche Cup Series. The top drivers today all came from the Porsche Cup Series. If you learn to drive a Porsche, a rear end engine Porsche 911, you'll be better suited for anything else you do in the rest of the world. It has no nannies, meaning no ABS, no traction control. I mean, quite frankly, nothing. And you know, the famous words in driving 911 is not if, it's when it's gonna spin. Because the Porsche has the physics defying engine behind the rear axle, the engine doesn't wanna stay behind you ever. But if you learn how to drive a Porsche at speed, you will absolutely succeed at anything. So we service cars, we quote unquote hot rod cars. We all came up from hot riding American iron, push rod cars, yay. So I just think it's attention to detail, having been there before. Price yeah, is a nice shop. It's cool, and Steve, when I came back to Austin, uh, having traveled uh, racing for most of my adult life, we realized early on that the shop that Dave Moore had at the time wasn't large enough to service what we wanted to do. So here we are in this 20,000 square foot shop, and I would argue it's already too small. <music> Clearly from a young age, I realized that I had a huge draw towards anything motorized starting from blowing up my father's lawnmower to racing go-karts, to being lucky enough to move to Spain for a while as part of our education. I heard cars running around the street circuit in Barcelona, piqued my interest again. I'm not sure my parents wanted me to do that, but that's what I did. This comes off, it's uh, mandatory in all modern race cars, so they can help get the driver out of the car without hurting him. Jimmy Clark was my hero, drove Ford-powered cars at Indianapolis, when the GT40 came out, that's, I could honestly say that was what turned me to loving racing. Price, don't you have a red GT40, one from the mid 60s? We do have a 66 427 original 4GT out at Coda right now. And we could go out to the track and take a ride? Let's see why not. If we can fit you in, let's go do it. I lay it all at the feet of the GT40. Every bit of my career stemmed from my love of that car. When the GT40 came out, I thought it was the most beautiful car I'd ever seen. By today's standards, it wasn't very fast, you know, but gosh darn it, did it rock and roll. The Ford GT40 is an iconic American supercar that changed the history of motorsports in the U.S., winning the 24-hour of Le Mans race in France four consecutive times from 1966 to 1969. The GT stands for Grand Touring, and the 40 represents its overall height of 40 inches. Roughly 500 horsepower, almost that much in torque, it's a powerhouse of American racing ingenuity, and today we're going to push it to its limits. Let's fire it on up. Wow. Oh, yes, please. This thing weighs barely more than a Miata. Good for 90 miles an hour in first gear, a buck 40 in second gear, over 200 miles an hour on the top end. So let's put this car in perspective. These cars were built in the mid-60s, 50 years ago. 
They went over 200 miles an hour. You ain't gonna pick up the kids from school in this thing. This is a purpose-built race car. Well, let's not forget that this car was built in an era when Enzo Ferrari had irritated Henry Ford. Henry Ford was gonna purchase Ferrari to go after the world championship, but it didn't happen. Ferrari wouldn't sell. They wouldn't sell. It wouldn't and it sell. was a sudden thing because they had agreed that it was going to sell. So Ford started and built a car of his own. Now this car in particular, if you look at the seats, this, you know, these cars are hot. The radiator's in the front of the car. Back in the day, there was also no way to sort of insulate the heat coming off the radiator into the car. So eventually the car gets heat soaked. Is every bit the temperature of the water in the car. So these seats have giant air holes in them to try to cool your body. This is part of the engine right there. Right which, there, the engine is literally yeah, right there at yeah. your elbow, millimeters from your body. It's on my, and, on and, my right and shoulder. And if nothing goes wrong, Steve, that's not an issue. But think about it, if you were to hit a wall, Oh. This lump doesn't tend to stop when you and I do. Well, like so you said, it will be coming yeah, through the car. You were, you were expendable back then. Correct. So. There's no doubt that other teams can mechanically put a car together as well as we can. Let's not beat each other up over that. However, because of my personal knowledge and Dave's knowledge as an engineer and our ability to take the data out of a car and actually help them overcome difficult situations, more speed does that better than anybody else. Sounds cocky, but it's the facts. I'll tell you, if I ever get one of these, I'm bringing it here. We're all car people. We love it when people come here just to look at the cars, even if they never spend the dime here. It's the first ever uh, modern day Porsche race car with direct injection. You know, I was lucky enough to have been in positions to race at Le Mans, to do it, some other things like that. You know, now at my age, the only thing I have left is to pass on what I've learned to others. In England, in Europe, there's a streetcar. In the United <laughs> States, definitely not. It's my pure joy to try to educate somebody else and give them the opportunities that I had in my lifetime. Uh, it runs in my blood. It's my passion. So it's an enjoyable time.